This review has been made possible by Toyota of Naperville. As you know, Toyota has tons of brand new Toyotas available for purchase, but did you know that they also have a remarkable selection of used cars? Head on over to toyotaofnaperville.com and look through hundreds of used cars for sale right now. All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2010 Honda Civic Si Coupe. Up front is a 2.0 liter inline four and down below is a six speed manual transmission. Now I'm super excited to be driving this here Civic Si for really one main reason. Well, I guess two. The first reason is the fact that last year I drove a Honda Civic Si sedan from this same generation. This is an eighth generation Honda Civic and I drove the four door version, but I haven't driven the two door. So it's always fun to compare and contrast and I'm gonna be doing that a lot in this video. So go check out the sedan video if you want my thoughts on that. But the second reason is the fact that Civic Si's are always fun to drive. So. I guess I'm not mad on this Friday morning. But before we get on with the rest of the video, if you are interested in helping out the channel, there are some links in the description below for some products that go towards helping the channel. There is a suction cup license plate from Con Plates. There is a fixed OBD2 Bluetooth sensor to help diagnose your car issues. And there is cash for cars that helps you sell your vehicle quickly. Again, if you'd like to help out the channel, please click the links in the description below. Let's get on with the video. So let's get back to that 2.0 liter inline four under the hood. It is a K20 engine putting out 197 horsepower, redlining at around 8,000 RPM. Now, this is a dual overhead cam engine, four valves per cylinder, and it has VTEC. The fun thing about VTEC in this car is that you can really hear it and feel it when it engages. So it makes the driving experience fun. Not a lot of other cars have that sort of secondary excitement to look forward to when you're revving. They just rev all the way out and then you next gear. But this sort of has the, a power surge. So I'll roll down the window and see if you can hear when it switches over to VTEC. This is just first gear. <laughs> did you hear it? I'm pretty sure you did because it gets significantly louder. We'll try it here again in second gear in case you missed it. That is not me altering the audio of the video at all. So that certainly adds some fun to the car. Is it equivalent to a turbo? No, it doesn't give you amazing power. Like I said, 197 horsepower, we're still in the ones, but it is something to look forward to. It makes you feel a little sporty. Like I said, paired to it is a six speed manual transmission. Now the Civic Si is the sport trim of the Civic. It's more of the enthusiast version when we didn't get the Type R here in the States. This used to be the sportiest, most fun Civic. And so it only got a six speed manual transmission. So if you see a Honda Civic Si out in public and it has that Si badge on the back, it is a six speed manual transmission. They did not make automatic Civic SIs. They made automatic Civics of course, but not with the SI sporty trim. Last but not least, the Civic is front wheel drive and it has a limited slip differential up front. So that's again, part of the Civic SI package is that you got a front limited slip differential, which is very, very nice. So let's talk about the interior. We have quite a bit to talk about in here. Well, up in front of me, way in front of me, I have my coolant temperature, speed, and fuel way up on the dash. So these are digital gauges and they are very far away from me. In my current seating position, I cannot even physically touch them. But then down below that, I have my tachometer with my odometer and things like that down at the bottom. I like this two tier system. I see the tachometer through the steering wheel, but I see my speed up above the steering wheel and it makes the car feel sort of like a spaceship. You know, you have all these screens everywhere and you know, you gotta keep an eye on sort of everything. Now, I wish the tachometer was up at the top and the speedometer was down at the bottom because, you know, for more sporty drives, you're more worried about your engine speed than the road speed, but that's just a personal preference. I do have a shift light 
up on that upper gauge cluster. So if I wanna keep an eye on that, it will flash when it wants me to shift, which is super nice. On the steering wheel on the left, I have my channel volume and mode for the radio. And on the right, I have my cruise control options. Nothing insanely crazy here. I think the steering wheel looks very presentable, very modern, and I really like that fact. To the left of me, I have my mirror switches, traction control off, and of course, like reset and gauge dimmer switch and stuff for my gauge dimmer switches. This set reset button is how you cycle through the odometer at the bottom of the speedometer, so you can cycle through a couple things there. And then on the door, I have my lock and unlock, child locks, and my power windows. The door card itself is presentable, looks good. Good. No complaints there. Moving into the center, I have the premium audio system from Honda, which gives me AM, FM, CD, and AUX, which is nice for 2010. You know, obviously Apple CarPlay wasn't even invented yet at this point. So by 2010 standards, this is pretty decent. The buttons are nice and large, very easy to see and very easy to hit, which is very nice at the glance of an eye you can tell what you're looking at and then we have the climate controls down below that again very basic i don't get dual zone or anything like that but i get my fan speed temperature and where to send it all you really need here in a honda civic down below that i have a little cubby and a 12 volt outlet to the left and then i have another cubby and we come to the shifter itself the shifter has its nice own little small island I kind of like the look of it, and I love the look and feel of the shifter itself. It's nice and small, fits very nice in your hands. The shift boot is leather, stitched, very presentable. And again, the shift knob looks great for being on a 170,000 mile car. So, bonus points there for Honda. To the left of that, I do have my handbrake, which is almost comically small. It's a lot smaller than any other handbrake you'll find in most other cars, but it works the same. Then I have a little cubby with slide out cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' model test here in the Civic Si and it passes. Honda is fantastic about building cars that can fit my ginormous water bottle. And the Civic Si from 2010 is no exception to that rule. It passes and I love it. Then I have a little center console and the seats. Now the seats are extra aggressive here in the Civic Si, they're extra sporty. They say Si on them, they have a little bit of Alcantara, a little bit of perforated cloth, and they really hold you in. This is about my limit being a bigger guy of racing seats that I could fit in. The Civic Type R is too aggressive for me. But these, these I can manage with. They're pretty comfortable and they really do hold you in place, at least a lot better than a stock Honda Civic seat would. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats, so let's go do a back seat review. All right, and here we have exhibit A on why I prefer the sedan. I don't have any controls on the back of the seat to move it forward. I have to use the side controls, which a lot of coupes have them on the back for easy access, but I do not. Let's... Ugh. All right, so we're in the back of the 2010 Honda Civic Si Coupe, and this is a downside of the coupe for sure. Space back here isn't great. Headroom is actually the worst part. If I sit up straight, my head is hitting the ceiling. This is not good. In terms of actual seat comfort, the seat itself is actually pretty nice. I do have a very small cup holder over here, cup holder over there, no center console. And yes, I do have a back seat. If you absolutely need the back seats, you can use them. But this is why I just want to draw a stronger argument for the sedan. The sedan back seats are a lot more comfortable, a lot more spacious, and a lot easier to get into. So if you have any plan on using back seats, I'd highly recommend the sedan. It doesn't forfeit any performance, and it's just way better but let's go talk about the trunk all right so we're on the back of the 2010 honda civic si coupe and we do have a button on the key to pop the trunk just like that and pull it up the trunk is actually a really good size with it being a coupe you would think you would have a small trunk but actually this is really really nice i'd say very comparable to the sedan in terms of trunk space on par with the sedan, you don't even have to worry about that. It's really just the back seat space that changes with the sedan, but again, I'll stop talking about the sedan for a little bit. Really nice space back here. You can lower the back seats if you want to from that little button here. And I do get a spare, things like that, light blue there. But anyway, 
Fantastic trunk. You're really going to be able to fit a bunch of stuff if you want to go to college, move, whatever it is. You're going to be able to fit plenty in here. So now we got to talk about the looks. And this is where I might start to get a little controversial. I like the front end, but I dislike the rear end of the coupe. I don't like the way the coupe looks. I prefer the sedan. I just feel like the sedan is better proportioned. It's more like a car and a Honda Civic is just a car. However, I do give this particular car bonus points for having the awesome blue color. If I could get a sedan in this color, SI, I would love it. I think that'd be my dream SI because I really do enjoy this color, but I'm just not a fan of having only two doors on a Honda Civic. My Miata or RX-7, yeah, I'm fine with having two doors with that because I only drive those cars on the weekend. But a Honda Civic Si, this is not a weekend car. This is a daily driver that you can have tons of fun with. And so as a daily driver, I, I want four doors. It's very important to me. And so the coupe doesn't quite cut the mustard. And last but not least about the exterior, this is the facelift, which was actually facelifted for the 2010 year. Now we gotta talk about my final thoughts here on the Civic Si. What do I think? Well, I think it's awesome that I drove a Honda Civic Si sedan with very similar mileage. Really gives me a good idea of what these cars are like and I can compare them a lot better. And I have to say, honestly, I'm still a bigger fan of the sedan than I am the coupe. It's just personal preference. Driving feel, enjoyment is all the same with the sedan or the coupe. It really truly is. But I just like the practicality of the sedan. Exhibit A. Hey man, if I ever catch you in my comment section ever again, you're gonna have to pay, all right? Yeah. Imagine I pull up to a red carpet of the premiere of the Shooting Cars movie. So, as you can see, no one looks graceful getting into the back of a coupe. And I don't want to embarrass my friends that I might be driving around. So, I prefer the sedan. You just, you just look better doing it. But besides that, besides my sedan master race bias, I love this car. I really, really do. It's very, very engaging. It's very easy to drive. You toss it into gear. I was driving it to the test track. I downshifted twice from fourth into third into second, and it's super, super easy to do. Right, now we're in second. It's super easy to drive, it's super easy to have fun, and yet you still have the practicality of a Civic, you still have the reliability of a Civic, you know, this is still when Honda was pretty good with their reliability. The K20 is a very stout engine. You have the VTEC, you have the dual red cams, it's buzzy, it's light, it's fun. I really don't have anything bad to say about the Honda Civic Si. I really, really don't. If you're looking to get into cars and this is in your budget, this is a fantastic starter car. Learn how to drive manual on it. It's very, very forgiving. It's not going to scald you for missing a gear. It's not too much power where you might really get yourself in trouble. You're not really gonna be breaking the speed limits if you wanna give it a little bit of juice like you would with a Civic Type R. This car is fun within means. It's almost like it has a built-in safety net, which I think is great. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Toyota of Naperville for letting me take out their Honda Civic Si. This is one of their used vehicles. Please go check them out if you're looking for a new or used vehicle. They are absolutely awesome. I've been working with them for almost three years at this point, and I've never had an issue with them. Really solid staff, really great staff, and I promise you won't regret buying a car from them. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.